Okay. Okay, so if you just joined, please put your name so it shows up so we know who's who. We have a wonderful group so far. And we're going to get started. So welcome to the Healthy Habits for Mental Wellness Masterclass. I'm Lorraine Miller. I'm a certified health coach. And my specialty is helping women overcome stress and overwhelm and improve their mental and emotional well-being. I do this through my group coaching program, which is called Calm, Healthy, and Stress-Free. You can visit my website, gratitudetobliss.com slash group coaching to learn more about that. And I also offer a private one-on-one -on -one coaching component to that program for those of you who want to go deeper with this work. I'm not a doctor and I don't give medical advice. I don't prescribe medicine. I am also not a therapist. I am a coach. I received my training through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and I'm currently working on two other certifications. One is in emotional intelligence and the other is in women's hormone health and nutrition. I'm here to support you with lifestyle, something that doctors and therapists don't always cover. So I fill in that gap. I'm very excited to be with you here today. And I want you to just take a moment to appreciate yourself for being here and for taking the step toward improving your mental health. Please put away any distractions, put your phone on silent, and set an intention to focus on this masterclass with your full attention and openness so that you can be open to receiving whatever insights want to come through for you. Okay, testing, can anyone hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, so should I go through all of that again? Yes? Okay. I heard up to uh, turning things off, shutting off your phones, and then it stopped. Ah, okay, I wonder what happened. I have a new computer, a new microphone, so who knows? But everyone's good now, it sounds like. All right. Little technical difficulties. Um, all right. So turning off your phone. Where did I leave off? Um, so basically, I said to set an intention to focus on this masterclass with your full attention and openness so that you can be open to receiving whatever insights might want to come through. You might have an aha moment. 
you might want to write it down. I recommend having a pen and paper or journal so you can write down anything important. And I'll also be asking you questions that you can put in the chat or you can uh, write in your journal. But the more you put in the chat, the more interactive this program will be and the more that everyone will um, be able to get something out of it. So I encourage you to, to use the chat for that purpose. Um, make sure your name is showing up in Zoom so I can tell who's who when you do put something in the chat. And for all of you that are here live, definitely stay on to the end so you can receive your free gift, which is access to the Bliss Meditation Collection, which is a series of guided meditations to help you practice feeling blissful. So just put in the chat why you're here and what you're hoping to learn today. And you can also put where you're from. Many of you are here because you are having mental health challenges. That seems to be very popular problem these days. So put a one in the chat if that's you. Many of you are hoping to get information about things you can do to ease those challenges. So put the word tip in the chat if that's you. Some of you may be here because you're looking to connect with other people around this topic. So put a C in the chat if that's you. All right. So thank you all for being here. I'm going to share my screen. And um, I'm going to go through some, some different tips for you. Let's see. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. And now I lost the chat box. Hold on. I'm sorry. I, there we go. Okay. All right. So So today I'm going to share some tips with you about things I've learned that can work to help ease anxiety and depression and other mental health issues that come from stress, overwhelm, and burnout. I'll share with you how you can prevent stress and overwhelm from happening. But what I really want to do today is to work with you to go even deeper because there's so much information about there about what to do. And yes, I'm going to organize that for you. I'm going to simplify it for you. But if we don't go deeper to see why maybe you haven't done things already to help yourself, then you may take this information and not really be able to implement it. Or maybe you've tried things and they, they just aren't working. So going deeper is going to help us uncover what's getting in the way. And it can be really super powerful. So I encourage you to stay on to the end so that we can really go deep and be sure that we are making progress. So first I want to talk about something called um, anxiety. Okay. So over 40 million Americans suffer from anxiety today. That's kind of a big number, but given everything that's going on in the world, it's actually not that surprising. So if you fall into this category, just know that you are not alone. Now, I went to a conference last weekend, two weekends ago. And I 
One of the speakers was Ellen Vora. She's written a book called The Anatomy of Anxiety, Understanding and Overcoming the Body's Fear Response. And she talked about true anxiety versus false anxiety. If you've ever heard of this, just put an A in the chat. But this was a new concept for me, and I, I really, really resonated with me. So I wanted to share a little bit about it with you. So Ellen says that anxiety is an imbalance in the body. It's a nervous system response as a result of some type of stress. False anxiety is an imbalance in the body caused by lifestyle choices. And more and more we're seeing this because we have a lot of stress. Um, we don't always have access to nutritious food. We have a lot of toxins in our environment. So the body is constantly under stress. And we're also, many of us overworked, we're sleep deprived, we're dehydrated. All these things contribute to stress in the body that can cause an imbalance and one of the symptoms it causes is anxiety. And Ellen refers to all of that as false anxiety, whereas true anxiety is an imbalance in the body caused by unresolved trauma or stress and is a call for healing or a call for change. So you have to clean up the false anxiety in order to work effectively on the true anxiety. So whether it's false anxiety or true anxiety, um, it's important to work on lifestyle. So eating a diet lacking in nutrients and loaded with refined sugar and toxins, skimping on sleep, overworking, not drinking enough water, not exercising, or spending too much time in front of a screen can add up to an imbalance in the body that can lead to brain fog, low mood, irritability, hormone imbalance, fatigue, depression, and anxiety. True anxiety, as I said, has a root cause in unresolved trauma or emotional stress. So when lifestyle is off, it can cause our perception to be off. We are less equipped to deal with the stress at hand. But once the false anxiety is cleaned up through lifestyle changes, it becomes easier to address the root cause of any true anxiety that may remain and to open the door to healing. So any questions about this so far? Please put in the chat how affected you are in your daily life by anxiety on a scale from one to 10. So one is not affected at all. And if that's you, that's great. And 10, you're very affected. You feel like you have anxiety every day. All right. Thank you. Good answers. All right. Now I want you to think about if you think your anxiety is true anxiety or false anxiety, put a T for true, F for false, or B for both. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of Bs, interesting. Okay, and F, B, very good. All right. Now think about what impact this is having on your life. You can share in the chat or you can write in your journal. What are some things you want to be doing but you aren't able to because of anxiety? Just spend a little bit of time reflecting on that. How much is anxiety affecting you? Just going to give you a little bit of time to think about that. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, okay. I can repeat that. No problem. So what impact is anxiety having on your life? Just share in the chat or write in your journal. What are some things you want to be doing, but aren't able because of anxiety? Okay. So dating and work confidence. Okay. Those are two very clear things to work on. Beautiful. Hard to sleep and get organized. Yes. When we're not sleeping because of anxiety, it throws off so many other things. It's so frustrating, right? Okay, I think anxiety might be affecting my clarity, which in turn may be affecting certain outcomes. Beautiful. Yes, anxiety often goes along with brain fog. When there's an imbalance in the body, it can lead to that brain fog. It can be inflammation in the brain. It could be, there could be so many different reasons, but it often goes hand in hand. It's hard to focus when we're dealing with anxiety. I can totally relate to that. Good. I'm glad you guys are coming up with things and sharing them. Okay. Anything else anyone wants to share? Just going to... Um, Stop sharing for a second my screen because I want to just make sure I don't have anybody in the waiting room. Sometimes that happens. Okay. Nope. We're good. Okay. All right. I think anxiety is interfering with my motivation to start a new venture that would be my life's purpose. Hmm, that's beautiful. That's something really to think about. So we're gonna do an exercise later to help remove these blocks because we're seeing that I'm seeing that a lot of these answers are that anxiety is blocking you from the things that you really want for yourself. And we can work on removing those blocks. We can help release some of the anxiety. All right. So I'm going to go back to sharing. Okay. Okay. All right, now. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go through five mental wellness tips to set you up for success. So this is gonna help you figure out where to start in addressing the anxiety or any other mental health or emotional health symptom or condition that, that you're faced with. And they're going to seem like simple things to do, but that's a good thing because sometimes we just need to put our focus on things that we already know we want to be doing and have the support of others to actually do these things that we know will help us. So the first thing <clears throat> Okay, hold on one second. This Zoom is not letting me do a whole lot here. And I'm having a little trouble with the screen. There we go. Okay. So the first tip is to create a positive morning routine and set yourself up to win the day. So what you do in the morning is, is really important. The morning is such an important time, and here's why. 
when you first wake up, those first few minutes that you go from sleeping to an awake state, your brain waves are more receptive to creativity and learning. And you're you're in a state of theta brain waves. And so this is the time when insights come. This is the time when you set, if you set an intention in the morning, your subconscious mind goes to work to fulfill that intention because it received it very clearly in that morning time. So what you do first thing in the morning really sets the tone for the day. So if you wake up and the first thing you do, like many of us, is grab your phone and start scrolling, whatever you're looking at, whether it's your to-do list or maybe something negative on social media or something that's stressing you out, like you're so receptive at that time that it could really set you in the wrong direction for the day. So keep that in mind and think about the things that you like doing to feel calm. So maybe you like doing breath work. Maybe you like meditation. Maybe you like going for a walk. Maybe just sitting quietly and having a few minutes of quiet time. I like to drink lemon water when I first wake up in the morning. It's hydrating and cleansing. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of some other things that I've created for my morning routine, but really put some focus and intention on what you do in those, especially those first 15 minutes when you wake up. Mm. I'm sure all of you know, I'm a big proponent of gratitude. My whole business is rooted in gratitude. All my coaching work has a foundation based in the practice of gratitude. So I recommend everyone practice gratitude for five minutes a day and ideally first thing in the morning, because if you fill your mind with and your heart with positive things that are going well in your life, it builds confidence, it builds self-esteem, it builds resilience and strength. And you become so powerful when you take that time every day. Um, and when you set out to make a change, whether it's to overcome anxiety or lose 20 pounds or get a new job, you're going to hit bumps and you're going to have setbacks. And you're going to want to have a strong gratitude practice in place to pick you up and push you forward so you don't fall into the woe is me victim mindset. So if, if you can share in the chat, if you have a morning routine, it would be interesting to see what everyone currently does in the morning. And if you're, if you don't have a morning routine, that's okay too. It's, it's always a good time to get started. Um, summer is unofficially here. It's everything's new. Spring has sprung and it's a great time to start a, a new morning routine. There's a, there's, you know, the sun is up early and, um, it's, it's, it's always a good time to start a morning routine, but I think now, especially, we can take advantage of these extra, extra rays of sun in the morning. Um, so go ahead and put that in the chat. And... I am going to share uh, episode one of my podcast, The Gratitude to Bliss Show, because in that episode, I walk you through a very powerful gratitude practice I call vitamin G. Some of you are familiar with this, but definitely check out that episode because I give you tips and strategies for sticking with it and getting the most out of it. <clears throat> 
So have a cup of tea, look at my calendar, look at my emails and social media. Okay. So Anita, with that, I would say, look at how you, you feel after doing that in the morning. Is that something that's helpful? Because it gives you kind of order and helps you organize your day. Or does it feel overwhelming or stressful? to look at emails and social media and your calendar first thing in the morning. That's what I would ask you to do. Um, make my bed, walk my dog, write in my gratitude journal, high five myself. I love that. Marianne, that's awesome. Say I love you to myself. Great. Elizabeth, no morning routine. Okay. And I get up, make my positive energy, tangerine tea, get dressed, pack my waters and lunch and head out the door at 6 45 AM. Okay. So, um, so a lot of us, cause I know this, this is me on certain days, don't always have time for a whole lot in the morning, but one thing you could do that really doesn't take any time. You could do it while you're brushing your teeth, washing your face, getting dressed is just simply set an intention for the day. What do you want to happen? How do you want to feel? You can just say today is going to be a great day. I'm looking forward to taking my son to the beach, going to work and seeing my coworkers. Find something that you're looking forward to. And that can just put you in a positive tone. Okay. All right. I think it is, Anita says, I think it is a bit of both. Reading notifications and messages is okay and organized. Although I think reading posts on social media is not helpful as it starts to bog me down. That's beautiful awareness. So I would say, see what you can shift in the next few days around that. Maybe delay that a little bit. Don't jump to that right away and see how it affects you and see if, if you want to make a tweak to that in terms of the order of, of how you do things. Okay. All right. Now I want to quickly show you something I learned at the conference that I went to. It was called Heal the Healer. And it was a really great experience, something I did for myself and it's called havening. If you've heard of ha havening, havening, sorry, as in safe haven, so it's the verb havening, let me know in the chat. I have never heard of this before. It's brand new, and I was really, really excited to experience it and to share it with you. So, Marianne, you've heard of havening. Oh, my goodness. Marianne from Glenhead, New York. We have two Mariannes. I love it. Um, so put in the chat, Marianne, if, you know, if you use it regularly or anything you want to share about it. But basically, this is also something you can do. It just takes a few minutes. And it's something you can do first thing in the morning. But you can also just do it whenever you feel anxiety or stress. And it's based on touch. So what you're doing is you're, you're caring for yourself by touching yourself in a way that helps your nervous system feel safe. It's signaling to your nervous system that you are safe and it helps you get out of fight or flight. So I did a masterclass recently called Break Up With Stress, and I talked a lot about the stress response and fight or flight. And if you would like to see that masterclass, if you haven't seen it, send me an email or um, the best thing is send me an email and I will send you the replay of that. Um, but... <clears throat> You can do this while you're practicing gratitude. So when I practice gratitude and when I teach vitamin G, the most important thing that I recommend you do 
is incorporate what I call the special sauce. So you're writing down in a journal five things that you're grateful for. And then you are focusing on the feeling. That is the special sauce to really put yourself in the feeling of gratitude and appreciation and any other positive emotion that comes up as you're thinking about these great, wonderful things happening in your life. So if you say that, let's say you're grateful for your home, you really love your home. And it makes you feel comfort and joy. And you're thinking about those things. As you're thinking about those things, just touch your body in a very gentle way, almost like you're you're giving yourself a facial and you're envisioning yourself just relaxed in your home. Maybe you're sitting in your favorite chair. Maybe you're drinking your favorite drink, coffee, tea, wine, whatever it is. Just imagine that. And you're just kind of, you're just nurturing yourself. And this can be so powerful if you're if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious. And if you do it every day, like it really kind of, calms your nervous system and helps you reset from that anxiety. There's a lot more to it. We don't have time today, but I just wanted to let you know about that. And I'm going to put in the chat the um, link for havening.org so you can learn more about that. All right. So put an H in the chat if you plan to use Havening in your morning routine. All right. So my morning routine looks like this. So, and it's shifted around a lot over the years, different seasons of the year, different days of the week. It, it, It might look different, but basically I get up and I've trained my dog to sit with me I go into another room, into our guest room, and there's a couch in there, and I sit with my dog, and I meditate, and sometimes it's literally five minutes, sometimes more if I have time, and then when I feel like I've done enough meditating, then I write in my gratitude journal, I apply the special sauce, this happens very quickly, And then I have a journal where I have a 90-day vision that I write out every 90 days. So I read that out loud. And then I take my dog out. Then I drink my lemon water. Then I feed the dog. And then I move into my day. I don't check my phone until I'm outside with the dog. Usually I multitask because after I take him out, He does his business and then he likes to play. So I'm throwing the ball to him, but I'm also um, looking at my calendar and figuring out what I need to tackle during the day. And I usually, before I even do my meditation, I usually set my intention. So after doing gratitude for years and really working on my own mental and emotional health and letting go of stress, I now wake up every morning and I am excited for the day. Like I just wake up and I think I'm so excited for today. And I think about all the fun things that I'm going to be doing. And I've kind of trained my brain to go there first thing in the morning. And it's really a wonderful thing. Now that That hasn't always happened. That's something that has taken a while to develop. And if I don't get a good night's sleep, it may not happen, but it's work in progress and it's happening a lot these days because I'm really training my mind to do that. And I've built this over time. Um, And then after that, I try to get some exercise in. It doesn't always happen in the morning, but I try to do that. And I'm going to talk about exercise in a few minutes. 
Um, all right, so we're going to move on. If, if, uh, if I can figure out this technology. There we go. Okay. So the next tip is to move your body. So how perfect. I was just talking about that. So exercise is something we all need to do. We all know we need to do, right? It's always been something that people promote as being healthy. But I want to just remind you all that exercising is not just something we need to do for our physical health, but we need to do it for our mental health. When we exercise, we... Um, we release neurotransmitters. Those are the feel good chemicals that help us just enjoy life. We are meant here to, we are here and meant to enjoy life and moving your body is, is a great way to do that. And it doesn't have to be cardio, like high impact. Um, it doesn't have to be like really high, high stress, not high stress. That's the word I'm looking for. Like high impact cardio. It doesn't have to be that. And as we get older, um, it becomes harder and harder to exercise the way we used to, because as we get older, exercise can produce more cortisol, which is a stress hormone. So even walking, actually not even walking. Walking is probably the best way to move your body. So going for a 30 minute walk every day, not only keeps your heart in shape, your body in shape, but it helps reset your brain. And it also helps you process stress. It helps you get out of fight or flight, but it also, by moving your body, it signals to the brain, if you're stuck in fight or flight, basically what's happening is that your subconscious mind thinks there's some kind of threat happening. And how do you deal with that, that threat? You have to fight it off or you have to run from it. So this goes back to the days when we might be we might have been chased by a wild animal and we would literally have to fight it off or run from it. So when you move your body, you're signaling to your brain that you're dealing with the stress. You're not staying stuck. You're not staying frozen because when that happens, that's when the stress hormones build up in your body and they can lead to inflammation, which can cause all kinds of problems and illness. So it's not just to exercise and, and, um, build muscle, but it's also to let your body know that you're safe and to process and release the stress hormones from the body. So put in the chat, what your favorite way to exercise is. And if exercise is something that you are having trouble fitting into your week, then let me know that. Um, you can also go on a gratitude walk. It can be so uplifting to take a walk and think of things that you're grateful for on your walk. You can grab a friend and have an exercise buddy and really make exercise sacred. Everything is what we make it, right? So if we don't like exercising and we're not doing it or we're not making time for it, we have to ask ourselves, is that really what I want for myself? Do I really want to deny myself this gift of movement? Um, and it could be yoga, it could be stretching, it could be weight training, it could be fitness classes. I mean, it could be anything. But even just simply walking is is great. So let's see. So we have lifting weights, walk on the beach, hiking, yoga, beautiful. You get to do that in California. How nice. Walking and Zumba, definitely hard to do consistently. 
especially finding the exercise buddy. No one wants to make time and then it gets boring alone. I would set an intention that you want to find an exercise buddy and just see what happens. Give that a try, Marianne, because there could be someone else out there that just hasn't found you yet, but is looking for the same thing. Okay, Elizabeth, no exercise. I have a gym membership, but never go. All right. We will work on that. Okay. All right. Anita, past six months, daily 20 to 30 minutes home stretches, two times a week strength training. Start Qigong last month, which is so terrific. Walk daily 20 to 60 minutes. Amazing. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Janet. Hi, Janet. I do orange theory, but want to get back into yoga and Pilates. Awesome. I want to get back into yoga too. I haven't been doing yoga for a while. I find it just so rejuvenating. Toby, I have been consistent for the first time in my life for the past two months, and there is a huge difference in being consistent. I noticed how well things move when I'm exercising, swimming, and walking, and lifting weights. Awesome. Incredible. All right. So it seems that there is definitely some excitement around exercise, and hopefully that's going to motivate those of you who are wanting to do more exercise. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, and then just one more question on exercise. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much does exercise impact your mental health positively? So some of you have indicated that it makes a big difference. But in terms of mental health, I just want you to really look at that. Even if you're not exercising right now, just what is your awareness around that? So one is, it doesn't really impact my mental health, whether I exercise or not. And 10 is exercise is really powerful in boosting my mental health. All right. Beautiful. We've got some tens and six to seven, 10, 10, two, okay, nine. All right. Good awareness around that. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, now we're going to talk about food. So boost your diet with healthy fat, protein, and antioxidants. So I did another class on the food mood connection. And if anybody wants the replay of that masterclass, just email me because I talked a lot about how food impacts us. But the main thing I want to mention here is that your brain needs certain things to function. It needs healthy fat. It needs protein and it needs antioxidants. So the brain needs good fat to function optimally. It's neuroprotective and can boost brain chemicals needed to form new neurons. So not getting enough healthy fats in your diet can cause a weakened brain function, cognitive de decline, memory problems, brain fog, and mood disorders. So that's an easy fix if you're not eating things like salmon and avocados and um, a healthy olive oil and nuts and seeds and nut butters and seed butters. Those are foods that help get good fat into your diet um, and any kind of fatty fish as well. Um, let's see. Yes. 
Okay. Protein. Protein is vital for mental health because proteins are built from amino acids, which play an essential role in the production of neurotransmitters. So I notice if I'm not eating protein, I get brain fog. I get anxiety. Um, I shared in the Food Mood Connection Masterclass that when I gave birth, my, my postpartum time was, was very difficult. And I had a lot of anxiety, but my naturopath did blood work and she was able to determine that I wasn't eating enough protein. Sometimes when we feel anxious or depressed, we stop eating and it just exacerbates things. So I forced myself to eat chicken, like just whenever I could during the day, just even a little bit here, a little bit there. And within a day, like my anxiety had cleared and it was, it felt miraculous, but it was really just a simple fix. So sometimes the most difficult things don't have to be difficult to fix. So I just wanted to share that. Antioxidant rich foods such as berries, nuts, sweet potatoes, and leafy green vegetables protect you from stress and inflammation. So a diet deficient in antioxidants can lead to brain or gut inflammation, which can cause mood disorders like anxiety and depression. We talked in the Food Mood Connection Masterclass about the gut-brain connection and how having an unhealthy gut can really cause a lot of anxiety and depression symptoms. So these are those false anxiety symptoms that I talked about earlier that they have to do with lifestyle and nutrition. So um, anyone have any questions about boosting your diet with healthy fat, protein, and antioxidants. And let me know if, let me know if you have questions, but let me know if you think you may be deficient, that your diet may be missing one of these categories of food and that that might be contributing to some of your mental health symptoms. You can just put that in the chat. Yes. Yeah, so the Food Mood Connection Masterclass, if anybody would like me to send them the replay, just send me an email. I, I can email you both the Breakup with Stress Masterclass replay and the Food Mood Connection replay. Okay. All right. So Marianne from California, I started eating more protein after listening to your food mood talk and I feel much better. Beautiful. That's amazing. What type of protein have you been adding into your diet? Is it a bunch of different things? Is there one thing that you find is working for you? Let us know. ready to eat chicken from Costco in individual portions. I love that. That's exactly what I did. I started buying grilled chicken, comes in a box. I buy it at Whole Foods. It's Applegate or Whole Foods has a brand. And I just keep the, that in the fridge so that if I don't have enough protein around, because sometimes it's hard to, you know, cook things. I just... I just grab and go, you know, sometimes I'll put it in a little container and take it with me. So beautiful. Um, the benefits of antioxidants. Yes, Anita, I can repeat that for you. So antioxidant rich foods are berries, nuts, seeds, sweet potatoes, leafy green vegetables. And they're, they're like the bright colored foods. So think of berries as bright colors tomatoes, lemons, citrus things, um, sweet potatoes, leafy green vegetables. They protect you from stress and inflammation. And you don't want to have inflammation anywhere in your body. 
but it can especially protect you from inflammation in the gut and the brain. And those are the areas that produce neurotransmitters. So 90% of neurotransmitters are produced in the gut and 10% in the brain. And neurotransmitters help you stay in a good mood. When you don't have enough antioxidants, that can lead to brain or gut inflammation, which can cause mood disorders. Okay. Yes. I love sweet potatoes too. Yes. So good for you. Okay. All right. So next we have number four, prioritize rest. Now this might seem obvious, but there's a difference between sleep and rest. And there's also something called rushing women's syndrome. This is something that Dr. Mindy Peltz, who wrote Fast Like a Girl, um, who is giving the certification program that I'm doing right now. Um, I don't know if she coined this phrase or, or she got it from someone else, but this rushing women's syndrome, we're always rushing. We're not slowing down. We're not resting. Sleep is when we're asleep and we are, we're detoxing when we're sleeping, we're repairing things, we're giving our brain a rest, we're giving a bi our body a rest. We know what sleep is. Rest is when we take time every day to just sit and just be. And I find this so challenging. Put a C in the chat if you find it challenging too. But I started doing this last summer because my son has a different camp schedule than he does during the year. When when um, it's the school year, I homeschool. I don't always have time. Sometimes we're out all day. We come home. I have to get dinner ready. But I try to at least take like 10 minutes to just rest. And I'm not talking about like right before bed. But when I can take 30 minutes or more to just sit and rest in the afternoon, it does wonders for me. It lowers my stress response. I find I have more energy. And it just kind of calms me. And I'm a doer. I like being busy. I never really like sitting if I know I have something to do, but once I got myself into the mode of doing this by kind of like just training myself to do it, because I had, I trained myself when I did have time, I'm like thinking to myself, why don't I always do this? Right. It's like exercise. It's just as important, but it's, it's hard to do. So, especially when you have kids, right? And Marianne, I, I was looking back through the chat and I saw something I missed that you said for the morning routine, Marianne from Glenhead, you find it hard with the little ones. You have young children and the morning can be really tough. And I totally relate to that when when Milo was young, he would wake me up and I really didn't have time. But to do my morning routine and meditate. But once in a while, I would get him to meditate with me and that was helpful. So with the little ones, the more you can try to incorporate them into the things you want to be doing, you're setting a good example for them. Um, but it's hard if you have to get off to school and, and I get that. So sometimes we just have to be creative and come up with ways of fitting things into our day, even if it's not, you know, the ideal and be okay with that. Um, all right, getting back to rest. So Anita says, I do rest each day better than a nap for me. That's amazing. Rest can like rest and sleep are two different things. Rest can be very rejuvenating and you don't have to necessarily fall asleep. Um, my mom always used to say to me, just rest your eyes, just close your eyes and just rest. And 
I never believed her that that did anything until I started doing it. And now I realize she was right. Like cl just closing your eyes and resting even for five minutes can actually just shift the energy and it can be very calming. And Anita says, I think children do well with quiet time. They do. They really do. And they need their rest. They need their rest during the day. My son was never someone who napped. But once I figured out that even if he wasn't napping, we could still have quiet time and rest time, that that was helpful. It, it just made the, the evening go better and sleep time go better. Not all the time, but... It was helpful when I, when I, um, was able to do that. Elizabeth is sitting and watching TV resting. I would say yes, but I would ask yourself, is it restful for you? I think it depends on what you're watching. It depends on how that affects you. And yeah, I, I think. I think it's all a matter of trial and error and seeing what works for you. Try that. See how that works. Try reading. Try just closing your eyes. Sometimes you might need different things on different days. But yeah, I think sitting, sitting alone is a good thing. I mean, sitting, if you're sitting and watching TV, the fact that you're sitting, I think it's a good thing. But ask yourself what you think is, is best for you. Okay. Um, any other questions about rest and sleep? Oh, there's one thing I wanted to mention. So resetting your circadian rhythms is very important. So when you wake up in the morning, if you can get outside or get to a window first thing in the morning and allow your eyes to receive natural sunlight without sunglasses on, I'm not saying look into the sun, but like you know, just look kind of to the side of the sun or, you know, somehow let your, um, your eyes receive the sunlight and your pineal gland is responsible for sleep. So you want to energize yourself that way in the morning and then turn off all screens, ideally after sunset, if you can't do that, um, I mean, right now we're all looking at a screen. Ideally, using blue light glasses can help to signal your to your brain that sleep is near. And I actually sleep more hours during the winter than I do during the summer. And that's because my body is very sensitive to those circadian rhythms and to sunlight. So I need much more sleep in the winter because th there's less sunlight. And animals do that too. They, on a cloudy, rainy day, they will just sleep. You don't see them running around in the rain. Um, but sometimes we're running around in our cars in the rain, right? We don't necessarily take that as a gift from nature that it's a good day to rest and sleep. But I also notice that I feel more tired on rainy days. I don't know if anyone else notices that. Um, okay, anything else? All right, so my last tip is to put yourself first. Now, this is really, really hard for us women. We are born to be helpers, caregivers, and we don't always put ourselves first. So if you are a people pleaser, a high achiever, or a perfectionist who is used to putting others first and believes that's important, this can be really hard. But once you change this belief, it becomes easy. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But before I do that, I want to offer each of you a special gift. There's a lot to cover regarding mental wellness and we won't be able to cover it all today. So I wanna invite each of you to schedule a free breakthrough session with me. This is a free gift. It's a 30 minute session where we'll look at your individual 
needs and see if we can identify some of the challenges. I know some of the challenges have, a lot of challenges have been shared here. So we can look at those challenges and I can work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you break through what may be getting in the way for you. So I'm going to put my, my calendar in the chat and just go ahead and pick a time on there and take advantage of this free gift. This is a way that you can really put yourself first. And during this call, we will create a vision and a plan for healing so that you can overcome any challenges that are getting in the way. I know some of you have done this call with me before. You're welcome to schedule another call if you wish. And if you found the call helpful, you can put that in the chat. So um, you can let me know. So putting yourself first actually sets you up for success. And it's the best gift that you can give anyone. Um, anyone else in your life, because if you don't know how to put yourself first, what happens? You can get resentful, right? What else happens? I'll give you guys a little bit of time to find a space on my calendar. Um, you can't take care of others, right? You get, you might get sick, right? You might get burnt out. Um, you may not be fully present for, for people that need you. You might be distracted all the time because you're not taking time for yourself. And this is something I've, I've had to learn to do as well. And I'm finding that by making myself a priority, I am more available to my family. I am more present. I am more rested. I am less stressed. So this is a really great way to prevent stress. It's a really great way to preserve your health and your stamina. And, and sometimes we need, we just need to give ourselves permission to do that. So who feels like they can't put themselves first? Please share in the chat if that's you. And think about what it would take to give yourself permission to put yourself first. What do you need in order to be able to do that? This can be a tough thing to think about. Okay, Marianne in California says, I'm learning that I cannot do my job as caregiver if I don't take time, if I don't take time to take care of myself, yes, beautiful. We all have to put the oxygen mask on ourselves before we can help anyone else. Marianne and Glennad says, I out myself first, but can fall prey. I put myself first, but can fall prey to feeling guilt and undeserving, sometimes due to others' perceptions. Yes, interesting. Nice awareness there. Mm -hmm. Guilt. Guilt is a big one. And it's not really doing anyone good. So think about how you can turn your guilt into something positive. Ah, then you tap. I love it. 
Beautiful. Tapping is so powerful. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. And we're going to do an exercise. But one thing I want to say is that we went over these five tips. There's millions more, right? Millions more ways of ensuring mental wellness and easing anxiety. Tapping was just mentioned. There's breath work. There's acupuncture. I mean, hundreds of different ways. But whatever you want to incorporate as, as a way to create greater mental well-being, mental and emotional well-being. Pick one thing, pick one thing that resonates, maybe one of the five things mentioned today, maybe something else. So we mentioned, um, let me just go back. I did have one more slide. Um, okay. We said, create a positive morning routine and set yourself up to win the day, move your body, boost your diet with healthy fat, protein, and antioxidants, prioritize rest and put yourself first. So pick one of those things or, or something else that you're, that you think you want to be doing, choose something that you enjoy doing something that sounds fun for you and work on that one thing until you've mastered it. And if you do it and you just don't like it and you want to move to something else, that's fine. But Enjoy don't try to do too many things at once that will set you up for failure. It, okay. They say it takes 21 days or 30 days or three months. There's all different theories to create a habit, but I would say try for 21 days to do one thing and master it. And if it takes longer, don't add anything else. The last thing you want to do is, is stress yourself out when you're trying to reduce stress, right? Um, and, and just work with that. And then when you feel like you've got it, then move on to something else. And this is how we create lasting change in our life. This is how we change our life, how we change our physiology. We change our energy. We change our outlook. And we do it one step at a time. And having support around it is really helpful as well. So I see you guys have put some things in here. Elizabeth, I'm going to focus on the morning routine. Excellent. And Anita as well. And Marianne from Glenhead, morning routine. Beautiful. Marianne in California, stop looking at social media first thing in the morning. Keep making dates with friends for walks. Beautiful. So you guys have really clear intentions on this. So I just want to do um, a little meditation with you. I'm not going to keep you on all night. But I think this could be really helpful. And it will also give you a taste of how, um, you know, some of the things that I do in my coaching program. So we're going to do a little meditation. And this is going to help remove any blocks or challenges you may be having with these things that you mentioned. So Hopefully you're sitting in a comfortable place with your feet on the floor, or maybe you're sitting on a couch or a chair, just kind of ground down and notice your body touching the surface, whether it's a floor or a chair, close your eyes and just take some deep breaths. I'm going to take three really deep breaths, filling your, your belly as you inhale. Okay, so breathe in for three seconds, two, 
three, and exhale, two, three. And now we're gonna breathe in for five seconds. So breathe in a deep breath into your belly, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. And again, inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. And just keep breathing, noticing your breath, focusing on your inhale and exhale. If it helps you, you can breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, but just breathe comfortably. Whatever works for you is fine. And now notice if there is any tension anywhere in your body. And just breathe into that area, allowing it to release, allowing it to relax. Feeling present. In this moment, feeling safe in your body. And now notice if there is anywhere in your body where you feel tension around putting yourself first. And just breathe into that area. Notice if there's a color. And put your attention there. And just allow this feeling to release. If you don't see a color, then just imagine putting some bright light to this area, some healing, loving light. Take as long as you need to allow the tension to release. You may notice some emotions coming up. That's totally normal. Allow yourself to feel those emotions. And just be with your body right now. Be with your feelings. Be with yourself. Give yourself permission to release whatever wants to come through. Give yourself permission to put yourself first. Take your time, and when you're ready, you can slowly come back to the room. And you can open your eyes.
I'm going to turn off the recording. I'd like to do a group share on this exercise, but if, for those of you watching the replay, you can do this exercise anytime you feel like you need to put yourself first. You feel like you've been neglecting yourself. You feel off. You feel out of balance. You feel irritable. You feel anxious or depressed. This is a really good exercise to help you release what may be blocking your ability to take care of yourself and put yourself first. And it can be really powerful to sit with your feelings. I heard recently that if you sit with your feelings for even just 90 seconds, they can release because that's what they really want to do. Our, our, our issues are in our tissues and they can get stuck. Our emotions get stuck there and they can throw us off balance. And when we have so much stress in our lives, it gets trapped. So feel those feelings and allow them to release and do this exercise over and over and over and um, reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm going to turn off the recording now.